Just give me your name. Peter Lawson Jones. And tell me about your character. Well, I play the role of the groundskeeper, who's a very interesting, intriguing, a mysterious figure. I don't think people will realize until towards the end of the film who exactly the groundskeeper represents. And what attracted you to this role? Well, there's a number of things that I'm excited about when it comes to this project. Uh, number one, I think it tells a good story. And I think uh, the characters, given the fact it's a short film, are extremely well developed with interesting dialogue. Uh, it's a wonderful story of reconciliation. I think anybody who's a father ought to see this. Uh, anybody who's a, a child who has a strained relationship with the parent would benefit from seeing this. And so that includes a good, unfortunately, a goodly percentage of, uh, of our community and society that, for whom this would be uh, a worthwhile film. And I just think it's uh, well written. And uh, when all is said and done, I think it's going to be something that people absolutely take, leave the theater having felt something, an emotion having been evoked. And how did you find out about the, about the film? I, res I found out about the film uh, electronically through an email that was forwarded to me from uh, Terrence Spivey, who's the artistic director at Caramu House. And Terrence has directed me in probably four or five uh, uh, plays, and it's because of Terrence that I got back into acting. I had taken almost 30-year hiatus. And when I went on the board of Caramu, and Caramu produced a play that I had written, Terrence and I became friends, and he offered me an opportunity to get back into acting, and the rest is uh, still evolving history. It is interesting because when I saw the people are involved, I said, Peter Lawson Jones. <laughs> so I think most people like, like, had no idea that you actually acted before you got involved with, uh, with uh, government. Well, yeah. I actually, it's, it's kind of interesting because I didn't act in junior high or high school. Yeah. I acted in college and law school, then not again for almost 30 years. But at this point, I've uh, since returning to acting about four years ago. I've been in five or six plays. I've done uh, commercials. I've been in a network TV drama, Detroit 187. And this will be my fifth or sixth film. And how's that transition been? How was the initial transition uh, when, when you told people, okay, I'm going back into acting? Did you get some pushback? Or, in a, put it in another way, um, did you have to try to find those muscles again mentally to get yourself back into that? You know, I think we're all blessed to have certain gifts. And I think I've all, one of the gifts I've had has been that, the ability to, to act. And to act is to, number one, be able to understand the character you're portraying. You almost have to be a psychiatrist or a psychologist. And, and then to feel it and feel the passion. And the passion uh, guides how you express it, your, your movements, be they on stage or in a film. And so I th think that was a natural gift. It's kind of interesting. After a, a friend of mine came and saw me in the first play that I did when I returned to acting, and her initial comment was, she said, so where did you go to acting school? You must have gone to acting school. I said, no, I've never taken an acting lesson in my life. So I think the, the challenge for all of us is to find whatever gifts we have and somehow develop them. Because when you're working with something, uh, a gift, when you're working with something you feel passionate about, life and your work is a whole lot easier. There's a light about you now when I see you talk about acting. Not to, say that, not to say that you didn't enjoy your, <laughs> your profession before, but I remember seeing you on TV and you're very serious, but I've never seen this like really lighthearted, happy, almost glowing. Well, oh, that's, that's a wonderful observation on your part. I've got to say this. How many people at the age of nearly 59 have an opportunity to reinvent themselves uh, in a way that's exciting for them? in a way that taps into another one of their passions. I've, I've been very blessed in life in terms of my family, uh, my wife who stuck with me for 26 years through a number of different careers. I have three uh, wonderful children uh, and I had a great career in public service that ex extended between elective and non-elective office almost 30 years. Uh, so I was able to enjoy the passion of public service and now the passion of acting and I'm also working on writing my second play. Oh, I'm exceedingly happy. But then again, I'm the kind of person who sees the life as, uh, as a glass half full. And hey, let's talk about your co-stars for a second. Sure. Um, Sabrina and, uh, and uh, Rex. Yeah. Um, just a little bit, what you gained from them, what you've seen from them, uh, their, you know, what you've observed from them. Well I, well, I think that they're both, it's interesting because they're different stages of life. 
uh, you know, Sabrina is probably in her 20s and is, and is just starting out and getting opportunity. And Rex is somebody who's had a full career in the military and who now is exploring another one of his passions, something he always wanted to do. So we're a great team. We're having a lot of fun working together. They are extremely talented. Uh, you can expect to see them in other projects. They're committed. Uh, Sabrina, at her age, me at mine, uh, Rex at his, to becoming the best actors possible. And we're fortunate to be working with Mickey Black, who's a phenomenal uh, director, uh, very collaborative, very open and engaging. I've worked with directors who frankly don't want to hear anything from the actors except their lines. Uh, Mickey's a lot different. She uh, is solicitous of your comments. She wants to know how you feel. She says at some point, hey, you're the actors. You know more about acting than I do. So if you have suggestions, I want to hear them. And so, so she creates the kind of environment and milieu in which it's a pleasure and fun to work. And why should some people see this movie? Well, people should see the, people should see this movie for a host of reasons. One, you get a chance to to uh, see some of the first work of a director I think who has a, a, a bright and and great future. You have the opportunity to see some some strong acting, but there's a message. Uh, you asked me earlier what attracted me to this film. I like films and projects that have messages, and during my political career. I've been somebody who's been a great advocate for fatherhood programs because I know if you have a good dad in the home, what it's going to mean to the family at large, what it's going to mean to the children. And this, when all is said and done, is a movie about a relationship between a father and his daughter and an effort at reconciliation. 